Right, welcome back to part two of this how to work with MDF terrain. As you can see from the paint job, we've done a really simple, straightforward paint scheme that does not look simple and straightforward. So I'll cover the various steps. I do it in three stages. Uh, you can do as much of the different stages as you want, depending on how good you want your terrain to look versus how quick you want your terrain to look. I do use a couple of different products, um, but there are easy ways to use acrylic products um, to fill in these blanks. Uh, and it's mainly about the process and how you're thinking about what's happening on your terrain to make it look good. Let's get to it. Right, first step is to definitely work on the chipping. And there's two ways you can do this. You can chip with something like metallics uh, underneath um, to give the contrast between a regular paint and a metallic paint, or you can chip with uh, regular paints. But the key here is to get contrast. So I'm using uh, dark colors uh, to do the rusty effects underneath, which I've gone for here, over uh, the top will go this pale colour. So in the end, you're going to get a very strong contrast between the chipping and the actual colour of the object. That really makes things pop and really helps when you come to do the weathering parts. And what we're going to use to do this is a liquid mask. This is the Vallejo stuff. Any liquid masking fluid will do, or like um, painter's masking fluid, anything that's going to be latex-like and you can peel off afterwards, um, and a sponge. I like to use this packing foam uh, from a case, but you can use a kitchen sponge torn up if that's what you've got. Anything with the structure like this that helps uh, make the irregularities with the sponging. Uh, smaller ones will give more of a fine gritty texture and then the bigger ones are going to give more flaky paint texture. Pour some out onto a non-porous surface and then you just dip the edge and you don't need a lot just like that and then what you want to do is you want to concentrate it around areas of where you can see the shiny bits where I already put some on earlier um, so I'm going to do some around the breakage that's here um, along the bottoms of the building, so places where it would look sensible for wear and tear to occur. So you can see here, you get this nice spotty effect, and that pale green colour where the masking fluid is, is where the dark colour from underneath will show through uh, once we're done. I need to set this aside for about 15 minutes um, for this stuff to dry. And as you can see, once it has dried, it ends up all shiny like this um, and will peel off uh, once we're done. So what we're going to do now is put it down and go over with the colour. I like to use rattle cans. Uh, I use Montana Black because it's got a matte a finish to it. But any kind of decent um, spray paint that's got an acrylic base will work. And I, used to, I like to use two tones like this so you get a bit of a shading effect. So this will be an all over. And when I'm coming in with the highlight colour, I'm going to spray down on top of it uh, to give the zenithal effect. And then I will do a close-up pass across the top half of the model to really um, make it look like this is where the light's hitting and give it some natural shadows. And coming in with that second colour when it's wet is absolutely fine because these are um, graffiti paints. They are designed to go over the top of each other. And you can see you've got a nice bit of shading going on. You can see the texture that we put on in the previous video. Um, and I'm going to let this dry now. And it'll only take about two hours to dry. And then I will be uh, taking the next step, which is to buff off all of the masking areas and reveal underneath the dark colour. And then you'll get an instant contrast between the chipping. When it comes to taking the masking fluid off, I've got two things I like to use, either a wire brush, uh, this is a brass wire brush so it's not too rough, um, or a square of, or rectangle of, um, really heavy duty carpet. Uh, this is um, doormat material actually, uh, which works really, really well. Here are the two test pieces that I did with the different colours, um, and you can kind of see, uh, don't get flock on it, uh, you can kind of see that there's this bobbly bit here. And that's where the masking fluid's underneath the paint. And the idea being is we're now going to wear that away to reveal the colour underneath. Now you can see it's started to reveal the colour underneath and you get this kind of chipped paint look here. And I would just go all over it and I'll do that and come back. We can see these two pieces now after a quick brush down and they're starting to look really awesome. Now, this one I think is ready to go as is if you wanted to. Now, we are going to do a lot more to this, don't worry. But uh, you could do a whole bunch of this and if you have it at long range on the table, it's going to look ace because all the chipping is right in the wear and tear places and haven't gone crazy with it, which is good. This one, I always like to do a wash. 
uh, and do more effects like I'm going to show you. So I wouldn't use this straight up. What I would do is if you want to use this sort of technique straight up for very quick terrain is to maybe go with a medium um, color of uh, uh, metallics rather than something as bright as I did here. This washes or knock this down. But if you want the medium color metallic and you just chipped off some base color paints like this, um, again, arm's length on the gaming table, that's good to go. However, we really do need to few, do a few extra steps if we're going to take these to the next level, especially these MDF ones. So let's get on to some oil work. Okay, we're going to move on to stage two, which doesn't take much effort to take your terrain from this to this. Let's see how. Okay, things you need for making oil washes. Oil paints, uh, you don't have to get expensive ones. In the UK, I buy these De La Rowney ones that are really good for value. These are a little bit pricier and I don't really see the difference. Um, white spirit, you can get the odorless stuff or even uh, low odor other working spirits, um, mineral spirits in the US, I think. Um, but if I'm doing this in the garage with a respirator mask on, I just use the cheap stuff. Um, a brush that you don't mind getting a bit manky, your terrain piece and a mixing pot. And this is my ideal mix of equal parts black and brown and about 50% green um, just to kind of add a bit of life to the whole thing. And then I smush it into my mixing pot uh, to make a paste at the bottom with a little bit of oil spirits. And then what I'll do is I'll add a little bit more um, mineral spirits to make it into a thick wash, a bit the consistency of like a GW wash um, or milk if you're used to working with airbrushing. Um, but what I do is I then test it on a scrap uh, before I go whole hog and I will mix a big batch if I'm doing a whole load of terrain. Add your spirits carefully bit at a time so that you don't um, put too much in because it makes the pigment fall out of the wash and actually ruins it. Um, so slow and steady uh, but the range of uh, okay um, mix is quite good. Here you can see I've done my test on the back of the piece and you don't have to be very neat at this at all. Wear gloves, I'm just doing this for the video, I'm going to wash my hands straight away. If I'm doing loads I wear gloves. Right, and as I'm applying it, I'm pulling it down in a, a downwards motion, and you can see it kind of adds a rain streak effect once the paint started to dry. Once it's, on, once it's fully wet, you can just slop it on and nothing happens because it's oil paint, so you don't get streaks. But I actually want to leave it for a minute to get these kind of streak effects and have it coming down the building like that. Now, what I want to do is speed up the drying time, so let's get on to that. Right, so off camera, I've attacked it with a hairdryer. Yes, I own a hairdryer and uh, it's sped up the process. You can see here I've left some deliberately streaky bits, um, patchy bits, and what I'll do is I'll show you how we turn that into something more interesting. And we're back here with our plain um, spirits and our piece here, and as I showed you, it's a bit patchy in places, but that's fine. What I've got here is a makeup sponge, uh, non-latex, because this stuff will wreck latex. I get a non-latex makeup sponge, and we start by brushing roughly over the surface, and this is dampened with the spirits, uh, just to get the surface um, oil wash off and then we see what we've got here. So I actually kind of like this streaking at the top here so I'm going to leave that there but this is too dark. So a bit more mineral spirits, don't slop it on too much and what I like to do is pull in the opposite direction to the recesses so that the sponge doesn't go in that recess and wipe the paint away. We go against it like that and you can see there it just brightens that up do that in the middle of panels so it looks like dirt and grime has collected in the corner. That's a little stark there, so I'll just wipe this off on some tissue um, normally and then just pat the border. Boom, done. Leaving that to dry. There's a little bit up here that actually looks a bit unrealistic around the window. Uh, what, two seconds wiping with the sponge? It's just dampened it down a little bit and uh, makes it really easy to work with. And there you go. Makes your train really interesting with hardly any effort. Um, and you just go around the whole piece and do this. And there we go, for a minute or so's work, I'm very happy with this. You can let this dry, again, hair dryer if you need to, and then come back in and tidy up little bits if you want extra effects. I've deliberately left a nasty looking collection of oil around under this piece because I know that in a minute I'm gonna paint this metallics um, and then add a little bit of extra streaking here to really jazz it up. Um, but this is what I would call stage two. And again, this at game's arm length is fantastic. And if you did a whole terrain table like this, uh, you would absolutely not notice that little details like this haven't been painted. They add a bit of visual interest, um, but overall the piece would look great. Um, and if you're again, happy to stop there, much respect for that. If you wanna go the extra step, we're gonna do one more and we're gonna work on the extra details and get them done with some extra effects and then maybe jazz up the bottom a bit to really break things up. Okay, and we're here with the third and final stage, 
So this is the magic stage where we're using pigments. Um, so we've got different manufacturers. They're all pretty much operating in the same way. Um, you need um, some small brushes for this. Uh, I use my old uh, painting, uh, miniature painting brushes for this and a little pot. These little shot glasses are great for this. And I'm gonna use white spirits. That's what I'm using for a lot of my things. Uh, you can use water to apply this. You can use any other um, solvent that's going to work uh, well with the pigments. So um, isopropyl alcohol does work. Um, you can get special pigment fixes and things, but this is going to be the straightforward, simple method with the white spirit that we're already using to keep things easy to manage. Right, let's get up close and have a look. What I've done is I've based the metallic part that I talked about in a simple lead belcher or any other gun metal uh, with a couple of washes of null oil or again any other shade over the top, let it dry. And you can see that the uh, oils that we used uh, previously have had a little time to actually set properly so they won't come off which is great. It still looks a little glossy uh, but we'll sort that out in the final stage. So what we're going to do is apply some weathering where rust has gathered around this metallic part and what we'll do is we'll have it run down. Uh, we'll put some green uh, streaks on to show where like maybe some uh, mold or algae or something is growing and just to kind of break it up because although this looks great and as I said ready for gaming we'll take it just to that next level. Right we'll start with the rust here and the key is to work from dark to light so I'm going to go with this red rust uh, pigment first. Anything will work as a palette I just dump a bit of the pigment powders out and then get in some white spirit on my brush doing this really rough. If you're doing this in bulk mix it up in a little pot and you want to get it so that you've got this kind of uh, loose paste here and then a wash uh, over this side and what we're going to do is going to vary it between the two. So the first thing I like to do is go over the whole piece uh, with a wash kind of dragging it down. Once you get these little flecks, uh, leave those, they look great as little random rust spots and you want to make sure you guide it around the edge of the piece without being too neat and then where rain would run down we're just going to drag, drag the effect down like this. If you have streaking products like streaking grime from Ammo, uh, they're amazing for doing this, but of course we're going to try and keep this simple and pigments uh, have a great use in so many different ways. So we'll do that there and we're probably going to put a little bit of uh, the red weathering here. You can use your finger to smudge things, that always looks great. And what we'll do is we'll keep these uh, little red areas here for a bit of visual interest, but we won't make them crazy rusty because there's no metals on the model here. We can, you know, suggest that this is metal underneath by putting some splotchy rust here and a little a little streak down, um, and maybe on the edges here because you can already see the under primer um, is showing, um, and maybe up here or something. Dull red has dried quite nicely, and you can see it's starting to make the paint, uh, the metallics look really really rusty, especially in these recesses here. And this is why white spirit's really good. It doesn't have the water surface tension. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just in a few spots where we really want the rust to look the worst and where water would gather, so not all over. We're just going to touch some of this here. And what you can do is the washes. You can touch them in the recesses uh, like this gently, and then the more powdery thick parts you can really cake that on. Maybe if you've got a part here where you want it to look really gnarly with the rust, you can kind of apply that quite thickly like that. And then again, once it dries, it looks a lot more matte. And I'll just put a little tiny streak down here to show where the concentration of rust is. And then these ones we'll leave alone, just they're a bit of visual interest. And last but not least, we have the green here. And the sensible thing to do is, again, look where water's going to run, but really concentrate on the bottom sections. So I'm going to put some of the wash in here, where you would get mould and mildew and all sorts of mosses and stuff growing on the bottom parts of buildings. And again, we're just looking to put it in the, the most deep recesses, especially up against the dark parts, because you get a nice contrast. Um, and uh, then what we can also do is get some pure powder and add that on. Get really thick and then we can just put some really concentrated areas uh, alongside the wet parts to kind of blend them in otherwise it can look a little stark and that's the key with the spirits is it really does let you blend and then quickly dry things with, uh, with a hairdryer or some form of heat. And look at that, you can almost feel the rust on this metallic area here and where it's streaked down in the rain You've got this lovely green at the bottom and then when it's at uh, table's length view again, it looks absolutely ace. So the last thing we need to do is to fix all of our hard work in place. And fixing in place, I've got two options here. Premium artist product here. Um, I really do reserve this for miniatures. It is fantastic because it dries really nicely. Unnecessary uh, car products. 
uh, mat, most being important part here for me. Um, my mindset is if this is good enough to go on something that costs thousands of pounds, i.e. a vehicle, um, it can go on your terrain and miniatures. Right, excuse the chaos in the background. Uh, nothing complicated here. The usual, give it a good shake, there's hardly any left. And then just blast it on from a sensible distance. You're just looking to seal the pigments in place so they don't come off during gaming and give it a matte finish. That is all you need. You have not got to cake it at all. Right, well, there's no denying that that was very quick and simple to do. Uh, yes, you do have quite a few products on the list there. Most of them are very cheap. Uh, these weathering powders, though they're amazing, or pigment powders, they're good for so many different things. You really don't have to use them. You could just wet the surface uh, and then apply your acrylic paints or washes into the recesses so that they blend out. And it won't look as good, but it still will look good, especially at the tabletop distance. And it just makes your terrain really pop. So yeah, everyone combine steps one, where I did the build and how to add all the extra jazz, this painting process, and you're gonna have really good looking MDF terrain in no time.